So how do piping and instrumentation diagrams look like? Take a look at the following figure. It shows a piping and instrumentation diagram of a fractionation tower. Let's have a closer look at this diagram. On this diagram, we can identify two zones. A non-graphic zone, located at the right-hand corner of the diagram. And a graphic zone, located here. This zone represents the engineering drawing corresponding to the process. You can think of it as a pictorial representation of the process. The non-graphic zone contains information such as the title of the diagram, the company that prepared and released a diagram, in addition to notes and legend that the designer of the diagram felt it was necessary to include in order to facilitate the reading and understanding of the diagram. All of these parts will be discussed in detail in later sections. In this video, we are only providing a quick overview of what a piping and instrumentation diagram looks like, just to put things into perspective. The graphic zone is undoubtedly the most important part of a piping and instrumentation diagram, as it depicts process equipment, how they are connected, and how they all work together. In addition to providing detailed process control schemes and, when applicable, provide valuable insights into how to handle emergency situations. In this piping and instrumentation diagram, we can identify several pieces of equipment. The central equipment that you can see here is a fractionation tower, tag T100. The notes that you can see here, just above the tower symbol, indicate the design characteristics of this equipment. For example, its design pressure and temperature. From the piping and instrumentation diagram, we can see that the tower receives its feed from two lines. The reflux return line, coming from pump P101, and the main feed line. Notice here that two streams are exiting the tower, one overhead stream to a heat exchanger, tag D101, and another at the bottom of the tower, through the centrifugal pump P100A, or P100B, then to a downstream equipment, tag V105. On the main feed line, we can easily identify a manual drain gate valve, the local flow transmitter, tagged FT10001, and involved in a process control loop, the pipe reducer, the manual gate valve, the flow control globe valve, the second manual gate valve, the bypass line around the control valve, equipped with a manual butterfly valve, two manual drain gate valves, the second pipe reducer, and a 12-inch flange on the tower inlet nozzle. The piping and instrumentation diagram also provides additional information as to the properties or specification of the tower feed pipe. The letters and numbers that you can see here refer to the piping designation code. In this example, the letter P stands for process. 3CS1S01 is the piping material code. It could refer to materials such as cast iron, stainless steel, or any other piping material. The 12 inches that you can see here indicate that the feed line has a nominal size of 12 inches. 10,001 is the number of this pipe in the plant. Other information can be obtained from this piping and instrumentation diagram, for example how the flow in the pipe is controlled. This flow transmitter measures the flow of the feed to the tower. The measurement is then sent to the flow controller, tagged here FC10001, which compares the measured flow to a predetermined set point. If the measured flow rate deviates from the set point, the FC10001 will trigger a control signal to open or close the control valve on the feed pipe. This action will alter the flow rate of the feed and bring it back to its predetermined set point. From the piping and instrumentation diagram, you can also tell the type of pipe or wire involved in the process. In this example, a heavy solid line 
represents process piping. This is the case of the feed line, as well as the reflux return line. The thin solid line represents process connections to instrument. This is the case of the thin line that you can see here on PT-10014. The dashed line represents an electrical signal. This is the case of the line connecting PT-10014 to PC-10014. Finally, a slashed line represents a pneumatic signal. This is the case of the line connecting FY-10001 to the control valve. So basically here, we understand from the diagram symbol that this control valve is equipped with a pneumatic actuator. Now, many other important information can be identified on this piping and instrumentation diagram, but we're not going to go through each one of them at this level of the course. The purpose of this video is to show you what piping and instrumentation diagrams look like, and most importantly, how extremely important these engineering drawings are for the operation of a process system. Now, do not worry if some or all of the concepts highlighted in this video are not clear for you. You have our promise that all symbols, process control schemes, alarms, and interlocks will be broken down into easily digestible concepts in later videos. You also have our promise that after completing this course and going through the various practice sessions, you will be able to read, understand, and successfully interpret any piping and instrumentation diagram including its process control schemes as well as its safety and emergency responses, when they are applicable. So, if you are ready, then please move to the next video and start exploring the non-graphic parts of piping and instrumentation diagrams.